Hi again, this is the second video in our series of five videos on row reduction. And in this video, we are going to talk just about the row operations. To begin with, there are three row operations. And they're listed here, but we don't actually have to go through the description of each one because we're going to talk about each one in detail in the following slides. I do want to point out, however, before we move on, that you might ask yourself as we go along, why would I want to use this operation? Or you might ask yourself, when would I want to use this operation? We're not actually going to answer those questions in this video but don't worry we will talk about those questions just not in this video the goal here is just to learn how to use each operation in other words how can I use the operation correctly so that I don't make any computational errors that's the goal okay the first row operation in this one, you can pick any row, and then you can pick any number except zero. We'll talk about why you can't choose zero in a bit. And then you just multiply the row by that number. So let's see how this works in an example. Here I'm going to choose row one, and I'm going to choose the number one third. Any number except zero is fine, so that works. And then I'm going to just take each number in the first row, starting with the 3, and multiply by 1 third. So let's see what we get. 3 times 1 third. What will that end up being over here? That gives us a 1. And similarly, the next entry is a 6. So we multiply that by 1 third, and we get 2, and then 12 times 1 third is 4, and 9 times 1 third is 3. Okay, one question you might ask yourself at this point is, why can I just multiply a row by whatever I want? And we can go ahead and answer that question. So why can we multiply row 1 by 1 third? Well, remember that each row just represents an equation. So let's take a look at what we just did in the context of equations. Well, the first row, 3, 6, 12, 9, corresponds to the equation 3x plus 6y plus 12z equals 9. And so what we did was we just took one-third and multiplied both sides of the equation by that. And that gave us a new equation. So that's okay. As long as we multiply both sides by the same number, we get an equivalent equation. A couple of notes before we go to the next row operation. You know, you'll notice that I wrote a one-third R1 above the arrow. Let's see. That's this this guy right here. I just did that because row reduction requires a lot of steps often and if you make a mistake then you you'll want to go back and retrace each step and this way you know exactly what you were thinking at each step. Also if you have someone grading your paper it tells them just what you were thinking. So here the one-third says I'm going to multiply by one-third, and the R1 says I'm going to multiply by row one. If you want, you can write out row one, but R1 is just less writing, so it saves a little time. Okay, and finally, as promised, why can't we multiply by zero? Well, let's think about what that would mean. Basically, it would mean eliminating an equation. So here's what I mean by that. Let's say we multiply the row by 0. Everything becomes a 0. What we get is 0x plus 
zero y plus zero z equals zero. And as we saw in the last video, zero x, that's just zero. No matter what number x is, we get zero. So this is zero plus zero plus zero, which is just zero. And so we just get zero equals zero. Well, that's true, but it's always true, no matter what x, y, and z are. Whereas the previous, the original equation was only true for certain x, y, and z. And so that's no good. We don't want to affect the solutions in that way. So we can't, we can't just remove an equation from the set. Next row operation. This one is the most complicated of the three, and it's usually where the mistakes happen. So let's go through it real carefully. Again, you can pick any row and any number, but we're also going to choose a second row this time. So in this example here, we're going to pick row 1, just like before, and we are going to multiply by negative 2. We can pick any number we like, so negative 2 works. And then we are going to add the result to row 2. Okay, and then here's where it gets a little bit complicated. We're going to change only the row to which we add. All right, let's just see how this looks in an example. So here we're choosing row 1. We're going to multiply it by negative 2. And then we're going to add it to row 2. Okay, notice that before I do anything with the second row, I'm just going to copy down the first and third rows because those don't change at all. Just the row we're adding to is going to change. And what will we get? Well, there are two options. So one option is we can actually write down the result of negative 2 times the first row, which is 1, 2, 4, 3. Okay, and the result of that is negative 2 times 1, that's negative 2. Negative 2 times 2, that's negative 4. And then we get negative 8 and negative 6. And then we can add that to row 2. 2, 4, negative 4, and 6. So we'll just add each entry. Negative 2 plus 2, that's a 0. Okay. So, our first entry here should be a zero. Let's find out. Yes, we didn't make any mistakes. Good. Now, I erased all of the work that we had, but that wasn't entirely an accident. Because, really, it's helpful if you can do these operations mentally, because you're going to be doing a lot of steps and if you write down that process every time you do this it's just going to take up some time. If you have to that's it's really fine it's just maybe a little bit slower but I want to give you some tips in case you want to try to do this mentally as to how you might do it. So what you can do is rather than calculating the entire second row or or rather, um, negative 2 times the first row all at once, just go entry by entry. So we want to deal with the second entry now. And so I just think to myself, well, okay, negative 2, I want to multiply that by the 2 in the first row. And then I'm going to add that to 4. And that's negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. Okay, so the next entry should be a 0. And it is. Okay, let's try that again. So, with the 4 here, we want to multiply it by negative 2, and then, well, that's negative 8, and then I want to add that to the negative 4, and that gives me negative 12. So let's see if that works out. Yes, negative 12. And then the last one, Let's just talk through it so you don't really have to write anything down. It, well, it, it may help you, but let's try doing it uh, without writing anything down. What do we get? We have the 
negative 3, or I'm sorry, the 3, and we're going to multiply by negative 2. So that's a negative 6, and I want to add that to 6, so I should get 0. And we have a 0. Okay. And then again, it's helpful to look at what this process would be in the context of equations. So in that case, we just have the first equation, or rather the first row is represented by this equation. We're just multiplying that by a negative 2 and then adding it to the second row, which is represented by this equation. And what that does for us is we get a negative 2x and then added to the 2x and that gets us a 0. So it eliminates the x. Okay, and you may have seen this before when solving systems of linear equations in two variables and this method is often called the elimination method. So it's totally okay to do, make, and so we're just doing it with matrices. Okay, and this, this tip is just reminding you, it helps to calculate one entry at a time if you want to do it mentally. Okay, next row operation. And this one is pretty simple. So you can pick any two rows, they don't each other, and you can just switch them. So in this case, we have, we, we just decided to switch row two and row three. We can always record what we're doing with a little bit of notation here. And so let's see what that gives us. Just what you'd expect, the two rows swap. So the first row here is now, or the second row, is now the third row. And then the third row is now the second row. Okay, that's all. What does this step look like if we convert back to equations? Well, it just gives us the same exact system of equations, but the second and third equations are listed in a different order, which doesn't affect the solution to the system. So it's okay to do that if we would like. So maybe later on that could be useful. Okay, so this operation doesn't change the set of solutions. And the other ones don't either. And, and that's why if we apply this sequence of operations, then at the end, we get a new system of equations that has the same set of solutions as the original system. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next, we're going to talk about reduced form, and that's going to be our goal. We're going to use the operations we learned in this video to get a matrix into reduced form. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.